Grace and peace to you. It is Tuesday, March 9th, and we're in the season of Lent, a time of ashes. Ashes to remind us to lament, to confess, and to repent. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. Welcome to this time of prayer. My name is Kay Huggins and I'm the Parish Associate at Second Presbyterian Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is a circle of close friends from Second Press, but also friends in Christ whose names we do not know. At various times throughout the day, we pause as Christians around the world to sink in Scripture, to give praise for the life that we have, and to lift up petitions from our community. Such praying is a as an sharing of God's grace, but also a reception of that grace as well. Thank you for joining us. Your prayers enrich our service. If you want to know more about our practice, read the weekly welcome that's posted on Second's webpage under Daily Devotions. But all you really need to know is Everyone needs a little mercy now. So let's begin with a prayer. And today's prayer is based on Psalm 18, the first 12 verses. I hope you'll take a chance to read those throughout the day. The refrain is this. I love you, O Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Let us pray. Lord God, our stronghold and salvation, Set us aflame with your love that we may reach out to our neighbors without count, counting costs for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I love you, O Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Well, the time at the festival continues. And it's now the last night, which is the grandest of all the nights, for there's a celebration that goes on throughout the night. Four huge lanterns were lit in the temple courtyard, and the light was so intense that the locals attested that it illuminated every courtyard in all of Jerusalem. There was dancing, and singing, and then the shofar sounded, and silence fell over the courtyard. The crowd was instructed to listen for the wind. Now some scholars think it was at this moment that Jesus spoke these words. I'm reading John 7, 37 to 52. On the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and shouted, All who are thirsty should come to me. All who believe in me should drink. As the scriptures said concerning me, rivers of living water will flow out from within him. Jesus said this concerning the Spirit, and those who believed in him would soon receive the Spirit, but they hadn't experienced the Spirit yet since Jesus had not been glorified. When some in the crowd heard these words, they said, This man is truly the prophet. But others says, He's the, he's the Christ, the Messiah. And still others said, The Christ can't come from Galilee. Didn't the scriptures say that Christ comes from David's family and from Bethlehem, David's village? So the crowd was divided over Jesus. Some wanted him to be arrested, but no one grabbed him. Later, the guards returned to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked, Why didn't you bring him in? And the guards answered, no one has ever spoken the way he does. The Pharisees replied, Have you too been deceived? Have any of the leaders believed in him? Has any Pharisee 
No, only the crowd, which doesn't know the law. And they are under God's curse. Now Nicodemus, who was one of them and had come to Jesus earlier, said, Our law doesn't judge someone without first hearing him and learning what he's doing, does it? And they answered him, You're not from Galilee too, are you? Look it up. You'll see the prophet doesn't come from Galilee. Can you imagine Jesus' voice crying out in the great silence? All who are thirsty should come to me. All who believe in me should drink, as the scriptures said concerning me, rivers of living water will flow out from within him. Strong words that the gospel immediately explains. Jesus is talking about the Spirit and how the Spirit will soon be available to all. This was both appalling and attractive to the worshipers who responded, could he be the Messiah? Of course not, responded. In other words, look at his clothes. He's a man clearly from Galilee. And scripture says the Messiah comes from Bethlehem. The commotion was reported to the religious leaders who called in the temple guards inquiring, why didn't you arrest that man? And the guards replied, We've, we've heard lots of preachers and teachers and even insurrectionists in the courtyard, but we've never heard anyone who speaks as he does. This set the religious leaders off, accusing the guards of following the crowd, a group of religious illiterates. But one leader spoke up, Nicodemus who had visited Jesus at night during a previous festival in Jerusalem. And he said, Our law doesn't judge before a hearing to determine the facts of the case. But the religious leaders mocked him, like so many contemporary arrogant non-believers prefer, preferring their own words and arguments over the opportunity to get to know Jesus better. One of the challenges in our lives in faith is to be clear with others that knowing Jesus is more than just understanding the words. It's soulful reflection, listening, and patient praying. So that's what let us do right now. We move to the prayers for Tuesday. Let us pray. Eternal God, we rejoice this day in the gift of life which we have received by your grace and the new life you give us in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of compassion, witness, and service. For those who make and grow the things we need. For the communities in which we live, for strength and abilities to serve you today, and for the many indications of your love at work in the world. God of grace, we offer our prayers for the needs of others and commit ourselves to serve them even as you have served us in Jesus Christ. Especially today, we pray for the church in Africa, for those who work to conserve soil, water, and air for those closest to us in this community, and for friends and relatives who are far away. And especially today, we pray for judgment to know and do what is right. Wonderful God, you call us to delight in you as you abundantly bless us with grace sufficient and extend great patience towards us. In this season of Lent, as we reflect on our lives, we do seek to grow in holiness. Bless us as we pray, that we may be transformed by time devoted to you. You ask us to pray for others, and so we lift up petitions for the weak and the weary, for those who despair and those paralyzed by grief, for the needy and the disadvantaged, 
and the forgotten. Bless all churches and organizations seeking to mend our fraying social fabric. Help them work together to renew broken systems of justice and mercy. Restore our vision of your shalom, a peace that includes justice and mercy. You ask us to lift up the burdens of others. And so we pray for continued healing for Francis, Ruth M., Tina and Julian, Richard and M., who completed his chemo. For those who are critical, including Andy's uncle Kenny, fragile and hospitalized with COVID, and Susie's family member, a child, Emma, also hospitalized with juvenile diabetes. For diagnoses and plans for Bev and Toby. For steadiness in facing challenges among Carmen, John, and Gabe, our elders, especially Victor and Lena, Joyce and her adult children, Marie and Rick, and all who struggle with isolation and restrictions. And we pray for comfort to surround Abel's neighbor, Rich, whose wife, Gloria, died of a fall this week. As we reach the one-year anniversary of the COVID restrictions in our state, we give thanks for the many acts of cooperation and sacrifice that kept our communities safe. We grieve with those who have lost family members and friends. We celebrate with those whose symptoms were mild and recoveries complete. We pray endurance for those with lingering complications. And we pray that as our social contract contact increases, we will engage with a deep sense of gratitude for the grace that God has given to us in this period of time. And as is our practice, we pray your encouragement on all in the medical fields, in home health care, in short and long-term treatment facilities, in vaccination centers and neighborhood clinics, in hospitals and treatment facilities. Especially we pray for Carla, Nicole, Cassie, Sandra, Camilla, Felice, Tilda, Karina, Emiko, Pat's daughter Toby together with her husband Boyd, Pat's brother Arthur, who as Sandra's cousins Melinda and Marshall are working directly with COVID patients. Bless them one and all. And now with the confidence born of the love of Christ, we pray as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may we continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the people say, Amen. Bless the Lord. Let the people say, The Lord's name be praised. And now as you go about your day, notice when the light of Christ shines among you. And when you see that light, pause and give thanks that God's grace once again has broken into your world. Remember the refrain from Psalm 18, the first 12 verses. I love you, O Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. And tuck these words into your hearts from John 8, verse 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me won't walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Go in peace.